Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Dina Court, and this is the Life Changes Channel podcast. Today, we are going to be jumping into one of our online support groups. And I've invited you to these before. And if you haven't checked them out, I encourage you to do this. We host them every two weeks online, easy to access. And today, we are going to hop in to a group where Krista Jones, who is a professional organizer, is going to be sharing some great tips. And this is like anybody, anywhere you're living, this is applicable to helping you declutter and transform your life because clutter actually has some mental health uh, implications for you as well that you maybe didn't even realize was happening. So this is a really fun and interesting episode and I hope that you will find a lot of value in this. I trust you will. You'll find at least one tip I'm sure you can use right away today. What we do in these online support groups is bring experts to you on a variety of topics and you can talk to them, you can meet them, you can ask questions and they are there because they care and they don't want you to feel alone. They want to be able to inform you and empower you with information that can really help you through major life changes like divorce, but also other life changes as well. And let you know you aren't alone. You don't have to stay stuck where you are. We also have online digital magazines. They come out four times a year. Newsletters as well are out every month. So be sure and subscribe to those. Check out the magazines. They have so much information from our experts that can help you answer your questions, help you if you feel stuck, help you understand uh, what is available, what is even out there to support you or help someone that you care about. And they're super easy to share because it's it's all digital. Uh, we have a blog, we have this podcast, a YouTube channel, the online support groups. And I encourage you to check out all of it. Links are in the show notes, you know, the routine. Okay, so let's jump into this conversation with Krista and give you some amazing tips that are going to help declutter and transform your life. So welcome, welcome, Krista. I am thrilled because <laughs> everybody's got, even if their whole house seems organized, you've got those junk drawers, you've got those painful spots or the, or there's just something, especially if you've experienced a divorce or some type of a life change, you've moved or you've lost uh, some family member and you've just, there's, there's, there are things that need to be dealt with that are causing you stress. And that's what I'm thrilled about is because you're going to help us um, rethink those or just figure out what we can do to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I have done this presentation many times in the last five years and it never gets old. Honestly, I love sharing all of this information and there's always new things that come up um, because of the work that we do with clients in their homes. Uh, I can always apply new things. I always learn new things from my clients and yeah, that's what I love about this work is there's constant learning. So if you are here to learn, you're in the right place. Um, I am a mom of two kiddos. They are 11 and 12 and they are, um, kind of the reason that I started this business. I wanted to have investment money for their future and for, you know, retirement and for travel. And so I started this as a side hustle in 2019 and, it took off um, during COVID lockdowns. And so I was able to go back into homes after some restrictions were lifted and people were needing so much help because they were homeschooling, they were working at home, they were stuck there, they couldn't get out to travel or go to eat out or get you know any entertainment, just they couldn't escape. And that was the thing that kept coming through with people who were calling me for help was, I've been meaning to put this, to do this. And I've been putting it off for so long. Now I have no excuse. <laughs> like I am stuck at home. I, I have the time, but I just don't know where to start. I'm so overwhelmed and there's so much to do. And to be honest, I just, I freeze. And so they would call mm. me, ask me to come in and kind of kickstart them. And that's what the six hours would do. And so you can see in these slides, I think, did, am I sharing? Let me click on that audience window. Um, so if you can see that, that, that's great. Maybe just give me a thumbs up, Dina. But yeah, 
you you Let's just go. see these transformations. This these slides are from one home. So a family with two children with neurodiverse, you know, needs. They asked me to come in and help them organize their entire home. So this was such an incredible project because we worked with every member of the family. And when we did these spaces, wow. not only did we transform the actual environment, but their mental, emotional, and relational health, you could see the change in the six days. And we didn't do it six days in a row. We spread it out. But mom, the first day we came, she was like really anxious. You know, her husband had called us to come in and help because she was feeling overwhelmed and he, he didn't know where to start. So he called us and she was like, I don't know if I can let go of any of this stuff. And by the the, the end of the first day, she was donating like crazy. And when we came back the second day, she had stuff piled up at the door that she had worked on while we were gone that she was like, Oh no, this can go. And then at the end of the third day of working with her, she looked at me and said, I need to apply these intentional questions that you've been asking me to other areas of my life. And I, when I asked her what she meant, she said, well, my schedule, I say yes. And I bring in a lot of things into my schedule that I don't have room or bandwidth for my relationships. There are people in my life that I just, mm, they drain me, you know, they don't really do good for me. And so by taking these steps in her physical environment and making these intentional choices and answering these questions that we had for her, she came to some really deep realizations about her life, her schedule, her relationships, her family. And this is a testimonial that we got from her at the end of it. And I won't read it because it makes me cry. Oh. But basically, the gist of it is that she now has so much more time and energy for her family and her relationship and the things that really matter, like herself because they invested in this service. And so we've recognized over years of doing this, that decluttering an organization has a variety of benefits for your lifestyle, your mental and emotional health and your relationships and yourself. So these benefits are, and these are just a few, but they're the top five, increased focus, saving time and money, decreased stress and anxiety, increase confidence and self-awareness and improve relationships. And so we start with increased focus because we deal with a lot of clients that say they have ADHD. And so when we work with people who have ADHD or attention deficit focus issues, we know that a cluttered, disorganized environment aggravates that massively. And so when you feel overwhelmed and you have all of these things that demand your time and attention and energy, it's really hard to focus because you feel pulled in like a million different directions, right? How many times have you started out washing the dishes? You go to empty some scraps into the garbage. You're like, this is full. I need to take this garbage out. I might as well go to every room in the house and collect the garbage. And then you get into one room and you're like, holy, this room is a mess. I need to pick these clothes up off the floor. And then you take the laundry basket to the laundry and you're like, oh, Oh, I need to switch this from the laundry washer to the dryer. So now that I can put this new stuff in the washer, I need to fold these clothes. You get into your room and you're folding and putting away and you're like, oh, I haven't worn these clothes in quite a while. I probably should declutter. Your dishes are still sitting in the sink needing to be washed. This is an issue, right? And so when we have so many things to do and so many things to deal with, it's really hard to focus. And decluttering and organizing helps give you the mental space that you need to recognize and act on your priorities. This also saves you time. So when you declutter and organize, you spend a lot less time caring for cleaning up and searching for your stuff right? How many times are we running around the house? Like, where are my keys? Where's my wallet? Where's my, <laughs> where are my sunglasses? When you don't have a specific home for things where they go every single time you're done using them, you end up searching for them. This often leads into buying new things. We cannot find the scissors. So we buy new scissors and then we find the old scissors. <laughs> so now we have two pairs of scissors, sometimes 10. How much money are we spending on things that we already own because we simply cannot find them? It is so common. And not only that, but we end up buying so much storage like shelving and bins to keep these things that we may not actually be even using. Calculate how much a bin and shelving unit costs. Like it adds up. So just keep that in mind. Next time you want to keep something, be like, okay, I need to store it. And that's going to cost money. This is one of my um, 
it's just so clear. When I walk into a home and we have a client crying because they're so overwhelmed and stressed out and we work with them for six hours and we load up their donations to haul away and we've organized and labeled everything they've decided to keep and a weight has lifted off of them, not just like the physical amount of stuff has left, but the emotional and the stress and the anxiety has left. And now they're like smiling and they're happy and they're proud and empowered. It's so true that less stuff equals less stress because when there's less stuff for you to manage and keep track of, maintain and clean up, you have less to worry about. And when you have more time, you get to relax. You know, this is just such a, it's a it, they all tie in together. So if you are finding yourself feeling like constricted in your chest, when you walk in the door and you see all of the clutter, that's your body telling you something needs to change. So recognize that an organized space reduces those stress levels because it eliminates last minute scrambling that happens in various situations. You know where things are when you need them. And it gives you feelings of empowerment, confidence, and actually enjoyment in your space and even doing your tasks because it's like quick and easy, not stressful. Decluttering actually teaches you to think intentionally about how you make choices and why. So as we go through the categories with our clients and ask them specific questions like, why do I own this? Why is, is this adding value to my life? Should I keep this and why? You are learning to make intentional choices. It's a deliberate, thoughtful, careful assessment process that creates important changes in your mindset. And you actually start applying that to all areas of your life. So everything from your schedule to your spending and even your relationships, what is adding value to your life and what's not? What's bringing you joy? What is benefiting you? You start to see with new eyes, and this is when the magic starts to happen. You become more self-aware. You recognize deeper reasons why you've made these choices in the past, and then you become more intentional with future choices. So it just gives you so much empowerment and confidence to live your life authentically and true to you. I am so impressed every time our clients work with their families in their homes, we see these incredible changes in the dynamic of the relationships, whether it's a partner relationship or a parent-child relationship, I mean, even just relationships with their friends or their coworkers or their parents, they start to tell us like, this has impacted me in so many ways, in the ways that I talk to people, the way that I deal with my family. I mean, how many times as a parent, I don't know how many people here are parents, but you get irritated with your child for not cleaning up their room. I just want to point out that your children are like underdeveloped, right? Like they have not gotten to a point where they can logically understand why they're feeling the way they're feeling. And when they're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out and like confused, they go into this fight or flight or freeze, right? Even more than we do. So if you're looking around your house and even their room and you think, oh my God, I know what to do here. Your child is feeling that like a hundred times more. So if you're stressed and overwhelmed by the amount of things and the clutter and disorganization in their room, just times that by a hundred and say, okay, put, I'm going to put myself in their shoes and recognize this is an issue for them even more. That understanding and awareness will help you as a parent work with your child to deal with the situation in a much, much less emotional way. And it's just so beneficial for the relationship. I mean, we've had partners who called us on behalf of their partner and said, you need to help my wife or you need to help my husband do this. And we're like, well, <laughs> we can't help them unless they want to be helped. So how about we start with a space that you have autonomy over and items that you can make the decision about. And then they will see from your example and the space transformation, and then they can decide. And 99% of the time we convert doubtful husbands <laughs> <laughs> through the process because um, she is taking control over her space and her stuff. And he's not really on board with the money that's being spent until the first session is complete. And then he goes, I think I might have some things in my office or the garage. And it's just, it's happening right now on a project that we're working on and it never fails. 
So we love to see the improved relationships that happen because of the work that is done in decluttering, organizing, and honestly, all of the saving time and energy and money and the improved self-awareness and confidence, it's only going to benefit your relationships. And most importantly, it means being able to spend more time with the people that matter to you. So I have 15 action steps and you may go, oh my God, 15 is a lot, but I break it down. Like there's macro categories and there's micro categories. And in order to get something done really efficiently and really well, you need to break it down into the micro steps. So we're going to do that today. First, you want to prepare. And I like my trusty notebook and I'm guilty. I have six of them. You know, it's fine. But you just go through your home and on, on top of every page of your notebook, you list the space in your home. And when you walk into that space, you're going to observe and assess it like you're a professional organizer. That's not the face I make when I walk, go through an assessment, but you might. I want you to look at your home and every space in your home as if it wasn't your home. This is super important. I want you to pretend you're the professional organizer looking at someone else's space and writing down on that notepad, what doesn't belong there? What needs to change? What makes you feel icky? What do you want to see in that space? What's your vision? Once you have that list for every single room of your house, have a glass of wine, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of a stressful process, but I also encourage taking a photo. Um, when you're doing this, take a photo of each room and then maybe go sit down on your couch and look at the photo and make your notes so that you're removing yourself from the space, which removes some emotion. And it allows you to look at that space objectively through the phone and write down your notes. Then you can choose your priority space. A lot of times it comes down to high use and high stress. So Places like a kitchen where you're using it all the time or a pantry where there's stuff constantly going in and out and then food's expiring and then you're at the grocery store and you bought extra of stuff you already had because you forgot it was in there because it's not organized. You know, that's a high stress, high use place. Um, but I also really want to say if you're doing this alone and you've never tackled it before and you just know that there's so much to do, start small. Even just a drawer can be a quick win. I mean, maybe not the junk drawer that's full of all kinds of things. Utensil drawer is a safe bet, right? Like, you know, the cooking utensil drawer is good. You can pick up four spatulas and decide which ones are crap and throw them out. So once you've done a small, quick win, you get this like pat on the back feeling of accomplishment and just gets the ball rolling and makes you feel more motivated to tackle other spaces. Make a list of those small spaces, those small drawers, even just a shelf on the top of your front entry closet is a great quick, quick win. Before you even get started, you wanna have all of your supplies ready. Make sure that you have everything on this list. Take a screenshot. This is super important because you don't wanna be scrambling around trying to collect things mid prog project. That just derails focus. I so wanna the hop in here, Krista, and just for anybody who's listening on the replay on the or on the podcast, get over to YouTube and watch the video because Krista has a whole slideshow here that can lead you through that. And so don't panic. If you, <laughs> she says, take a screenshot. You're like, well, shoot. Like, <laughs> sorry, you can I'm just listening. I'm going to pitch that at the end. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, and there'll be links for all of this in the show notes. So perfect. Thanks, Dina. I've mentioned this already, but take photos before you start. Um, this is really important because a lot of times we forget what it looked like before, and that's just um, human nature. So first step, once we've got all of our supplies, we've set aside time, we've blocked off, we've got a babysitter, kicked the kids in the hubby out the door, and we've got, you know, a good chunk of time to do this. Do not underestimate how long it will take. If you think it's going to take an hour, give yourself two hours. If you think it's going to take three hours, give yourself six. Trust me. I always overestimate when I quote clients because I don't want to stress out and be rushed and run out of time. The very first step for starting the process is empty the space. Like this is the physical motion of pulling everything out and anyone who goes through my Declutter and Organize workbook always says this was a st 
step that made it happen for me. Cause as soon as I pulled it out and it was all over the floor, I couldn't believe how much stuff had fit in that linen closet or that cabinet or that drawer and then clean it, just wipe it out. It's a really good time to sweep or vacuum or wipe and sort. As you're sorting items into their specific categories, you may find things that you know as soon as you pick it up, this is donate, chuck it in that donate box. You pick it up and you're like, this is trash, throw it in the trash, but focus on sorting things into their categories, putting similar items with their friends, I like to call them. I pick up an item and I'm like, where is its friends? I say that to my team and all the time, they're like, it's friends, oh right, the category, it's over here. <laughs> So once you've sorted it into categories, it makes it a lot easier to assess each item in that specific category. Is it toss? Is it recycle? Is it donatable? Is it keep in this space? Or is it keep and relocate to a different room? And I just want to assess the, uh, the relocate. When you have something that needs to go to another room, you can have a pile or a bin or a box and just label it with a sticky note, which room it's going to do not take it there yet. Wait until the end. Cause we don't want to derail focusing. It's caught up in another room. Stay in the room that you're in. Try not to go too far away, but you want to assess each item in that category, looking at the category and seeing how much you have of each item in that category and realistically do you really need that many which ones are you actually going to use which ones are your favorite if you're in the closet which ones actually fit which looks good on me which, which one makes me feel like a badass keep those ones and then let's be a little bit brutal with the ones that we don't use we don't wear we don't like it doesn't serve us I have a long list of questions in my DIY workbook um, and we can go through those, but we'll move on to the next step, which is categorize and contain the keep items. It is so important to have boundaries. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about bins. <laughs> I'm talking about boundaries in life, boundaries in decision-making, boundaries in shopping habits, boundaries in relationships, boundaries in yes and no answers. When we have a bin, a boundary for a category that is clearly labeled and that boundary is full, we're at the store and we see something that catches our eye and they've done a really good job of marketing it and putting the sales sticker on there and playing the music that makes you feel like spending money. You can stop and think, okay, in my bathroom, in that bin, that category is full. If I purchase this item, where is it going to go? And if I like it more than I like something in that bin and I can one in, one out, we're good. But if I'm going to end up just throwing this item on top of all of the other items that are in the bin and then it starts spilling over, I really need to stop and think intentionally about this decision that I'm needing to make right now. It's so amazing how our brains can visually see the bin, the label, the number of items in that bin when we have things so beautifully categorized, organized, and labeled. This is such a blessing to our brain. <laughs> and that's why I want to make sure we organize a space into zones. So you can see in this drawer, we have zones for the tank tops, you know, the underwear, the t-shirts. I don't know if those are underwear, maybe they're bras. They're like round, I don't know. Anyways, they're, they're tops, right? So they've got them in categories, the t-shirts, maybe they've got sleeveless, maybe they've got long sleeve t-shirts in there. And those zones make it easy for your brain to recognize right away where things are, where they belong, where they need to go back to and how many we own. Do you think we could jam a couple t-shirts in those categories? <laughs> Right now we could, but do we want to? I mean, it's so nice. It looks so pretty. I I just love it when I open a drawer and everything I need is right at the front and I don't need to dig to the back to find something I wear all the time. Or if I'm in the pantry, all of the things that I use the most is right at chest height and all of the heavier things are at the bottom and all my lighter things that I don't use as much are at the top. Um, my snacks, they probably should be up high as well, but 
we're maybe not the best at keeping them out of reach. I mean, there are zones for everything you own and they need to go in the proper homes. Um, every room has different zoning. So if you need help with that, you can, you know, send me an email. I'm working on my garage. What are the zones? I can let you know all of the zones there are, and you want to keep those similar um, zones together. But good key to remember, things you use the most should be at the front of the drawer, chest height, easy access, right? And then label everything. It may seem silly to label clear bins where you can see inside, but it is really amazing how quickly this helps your brain to just recognize and see what's there and what's supposed to be there and where it belongs. Um, we have labeled shelves, we have labeled cover cupboards, we have labeled drawers inside at the top and out on the front. Um, we label everything, especially for kids. Um, and then also for seniors, you know, if they have um, memory loss or, you know, things like that. And we do label for moms with lots of children. We had one mom that had triplets coming and she was going to be having family members and church friends come to help with the babies, doing laundry, doing dishes, that kind of thing, putting things away. And so we labeled everything we could think of. So people knew where stuff belonged. Um, it can be really helpful for husbands too. Like I'm just saying, <laughs> I don't like, to, well, I kind of do. This step is hard and I just want to, you know, maybe a hands up in the chat. Like how many times have you had the donations in your trunk and you've driven around for two weeks with them in there and they just, you, you know, that they're in there, you haven't forgotten, you know, they need to get dropped off, uh, but you're too busy, right? Even though you drive past the donation center every day on the way to school or work or whatever, and I'm going to tell you why. So you have decided to let go of this item. And then you decided to put it in the donation box. And then, oh, there's my balloons. And then you decided to let go of it by putting it in the car. And then you decided to let go of it again by dropping it off at donation center. So we've let go of an item four times, which in the case of a lot of things, is hard because there's memories attached to them. There's emotions tied to it. And you maybe just had a really hard time even deciding I don't want this anymore. So when you have to let go of something multiple times, it's super painful. And your brain, your subconscious hates loss. It hates losing things. There's a grieving process and it's trying to protect you. So don't beat yourself up if it's hard because it's just a protection mechanism of your subconscious. This is why when I tell people that our team will take your donations and drop them off at the center for you after a session, they lose their minds. Like it's the most important part for them. It's the biggest deal out of the whole process. And it's true because the letting go is hard. Our next step is to take photos. These are the afters. You can compare the after photos with the before photos and just feel so proud. Feel so proud of yourself and let yourself feel that accomplishment, that pride, that confidence, that empowerment, and share the crap out of it. Put it on social media, send it to your friends, text them to your families, not just the afters. You got to send the befores. And I'm telling you this because when our clients have us in their home and we're taking before pictures for proof of work done, they say, oh, you're not going to post those on social media, right? And we go, no, 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 not without your permission. And then six hours later, we finish the space and it looks flipping amazing. And we're taking the afters and we ask, can we post these on, on social media? They're like, yeah, I'm so proud. We did such a great job. It looks amazing. And then they say, if someone else sees the before and afters and knows that you can help them, like you've helped me, I want them to know you're not going to judge and it's going to, it's possible, right? So you can inspire someone you know and love by sharing your transformations. It doesn't have to be on social media. Just text it to someone you love and trust. And then they can feel and see that transformation in you and your space and feel inspired to do the same. This is super important because as women, we tend to just go, okay, I did it on to the next thing, but reward yourself. Recognize that your brain needs that. Your brain needs that reminder constantly that you did something good 
and there's a reward for it. So I want to do it again. This is really helpful when you have a whole home that you want to organize and just making yourself emotionally and mentally feel like, okay, there's a reward at the end of this. It's hard, but it's worth it. And yes, looking at the afters and, you know, having all the benefits of a declutter and organized space are all benefits. They're all a reward, but man, that glass of wine, that bubbly bath, that like big, you know, Sunday from ice from Dairy Queen that we don't usually treat ourselves to something that your brain knows this is a treat. And I did something really awesome to deserve it. I want to do it again. That's a great reward. So um, I just want to encourage you ladies that we do have um, a great uh, community on Facebook. If you want to, you know, join the Facebook group and get the tricks and tips and get the before and after inspiration and get that motivation, there's even some funny Fridays in there. This is where you can find me. So I'm in the Uncluttered Confident Woman Facebook group and my slide is not coming up. I don't know why that's hmm. not working, um, but that was my my pitch for my workbook. <laughs> uh, basically, we have a I have a declutter and organize workbook that I can um, send put a link in here for for you in the chat. It is a fifteen dollar workbook. It's a DIY, so you follow the steps. I have the steps that I've put in this. Um, presentation, but in more detail. And also there are some really cool pages for assessing all of your items going through your home and figuring out what are your treasured items? What are items you want to sell? What are the prices you want to sell them for? Where are, uh, what items do you want to give to somebody that you love that you think they would enjoy or ask if they want it? And so there's a lot of assessment questions in there. That workbook for $15, I mean, it's changed lives. I've had people send me emails and post reviews saying like, I did my whole house just following this workbook. Like it's pretty incredible of a resource. Um, and then if you are interested in getting our in-person help, we have a team of organizers that work across Alberta um, to help people in their homes. And this is a this is an on-site in-home like assistance. So you don't have to do any of the physical work. You can do the decision-making of what do I want to keep? What do I want to let go of? And then we do the rest. So literally shopping, we plan, we show up, we do all of the moving, everything around. We load up all of the donations, we haul them off and drop them off. And then we organize everything and all of the labels are included. So if you are interested in doing that with our team, no matter where you live in Alberta, we would come to you. We're up in Slave Lake right now. <laughs> we do Fort McMurray down in Calgary and around. So if you're interested in that, I can post um, our link for the um, website and then our Calendly booking, and you can book a free home assessment with us over Zoom. So let me just go to the chat and see if we have any questions. I didn't notice any in there, but. Um, well, they one, can pipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please drop any in there. That was really good. And I, I love, I think one of my favorite parts, Krista, was that you had 15 steps and we're going, oh my God, okay, 15. But that included things like relaxation, <laughs> like, you know, celebration, I guess I should say, which yeah. to me would be relaxation at the, at the end of that. Maybe for some people it's to treat themselves to going for a jog. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, I, I like the different steps and how realistic they are. One question that came to mind and you probably answered it, but I'm already sorting in my head. <laughs> um, do you also clean? So you empty the space and that was one of the steps. And then you suggest that, you know, while this is empty, it's a perfect time to clean that space. So is that something that your team can help people with too? Like that, you know, sometimes you find something's been spilled back in under something or whatever it might be. Yeah, definitely. So we will always wipe out a drawer, wipe down the shelves and the cabinets on the inside to make sure we are putting everything back into a clean space. We'll vacuum, we'll sweep, you know, it, people are surprised by the amount of 
dirt and dust and grime that can collect around clutter. It's really impossible to clean around clutter. That's why when people are looking for a home cleaner, I always say you need a higher professional organizer and decluttering coach first because it saves your home cleaner so much time to do her their job and you're going to save money in the long run. So yes, we will never put stuff back into a dirty space. That That is not our thing. But will you find us scrubbing baseboards with a toothbrush and cleaning toilets? Yeah. Probably no. not. <laughs> I have toilets because I will tell you trying to organize in a bathroom where there's a nasty toilet. I'm like, I'm just going to clean the toilet first. Then I feel better about being in here. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. something I know, and this is funny. I had to relate uh, to letting go and having to let go of things because I was talking to someone recently about my emails and I've got several email accounts and I've got all these unread emails and I just, I need, I'm late. I leave them unread. So I remember that there was a tidbit I want to go back to. Right. And they said, well, just try deleting them all. And if it's important, it'll come back to you. And my comment to that was, yeah, I could, because I know that they are going to live in the trash bin for 30 yeah. days. And they, they're just like, they cross their eyes at me and like <laughs> face palmed. And they're like, seriously. So you can let them go because you know, they'll still be in the trash for 30 days. Like that's not what we're talking about. So I'm, I'm guilty about driving around with things in the vehicle and, you know, maybe there, I didn't think I was struggling with letting it go, Mm. but maybe there is something to that. Now I'm curious about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amy, you've raised your hand. Yeah. So when you were talking about um, when you walk into your child's room and it's a a cluttered mess and how that's just a trigger, Mm -hmm. I'll use that word. It it, definitely for me, I feel that. And I totally understand how, you know, younger children do not understand that process yet in their brains. Mm -hmm. So what are your ideas on that? Like I have one that I can, I can reason with him. Mm. and it, it'll go okay but the other one it's a hard no and so like I've done it in the past where I've actually just gone in there and I have cleaned out everything and it does not go well um so now so, I'm at the point where it's like okay you have to take eight things out of your bed it, and I mean that still leaves like he, he lives in it. He I shouldn't say he lives in it. He sleeps yeah. in it like it's a coffin because he has so much stuff around him. I know. So, okay. I have a daughter who's exactly the same. She can sleep in a bed with like just clutter around her. Yeah. Then my son, he's like, he makes his bed. He doesn't even sleep under the actual duvet. He like has a different sheet and he's like, I just don't want to make my bed in the morning. I'm like, okay. <laughs> totally different children, but my daughter does have ADHD. Like we diagnosed her with that last year. And so her dad is very phlegmatic. I would put like, we're divorced, but I would put garbage, like the garbage bag in front of the door for him to take out on his way to work. And he would step over it on Mm -hmm. his way out. So I, I understand the difference of like personalities and neurodiversity and just honestly personalities. So I, I understand your struggle because I deal with that with my daughter. Um, there are a couple different things I've noticed, and I'm just going to speak from experience. Mm-hmm. It's 10 o'clock at night, and all of a sudden she's cleaning her room, and she's organizing her art supplies, and she's redoing her stuffies on her bed. And I don't know if that happens with your child, but it's like all of a sudden she gets this like burst of inspiration and energy to do the thing. And I, I, I just let it happen. And I'm like, yeah, okay, great job. And I like encourage it or whatever. Um, but if you, if you have a child who <laughs> honestly would not even talk, like they never take that initiative. Um, I would ask, can we do this together? Can we set a timer and put some music on and do this together? And mm-hmm. I want to see if we can fill this box with donations or, you know, some, some things that you've grown out of for some kids who don't own as much as you do, we do. Um, Mm -hmm. and make it fun, make it like a game and make it an engaging thing. Cause my son, he personally will do things if I do them with him. And so I do get the urge to just do do it myself. Um, cause it's quicker and it's easier and whatever. Yeah. But with him, like, do you want to do this with me, buddy? Let's make it fun. Let's, you know, make it a game and have some music. 
Um, and then there, there is, you know, the money thing I tell them, I'm like, if you can fill this donation box with things you don't use anymore, I'm mm-hmm. going to sell them and you're going to make yeah. some money. And I give them a $20 bill and I drop it off at Goodwill. And I'm telling <laughs> you, it works 90% of the time. Like have something they're saving up for. And they're like, can I donate some things or can we sell some clothes? And I'm like, sure, I'll put it in this bag and I'll sell it on marketplace. And then I just donate it and I give them 20 bucks. I, I will try that for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's so interesting. Like, and I know he he's not diagnosed yet, but I do I know 100 percent he's on the spectrum. Some way, somehow, I have ADHD, so does my daughter. And I know he's on there. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm just going through that process now. But um, like I, and he's very the same. So for an example about the bad thing, like if I put the camera on it right now, I would be horrified <laughs> because I'm, I'm not kidding. There's probably 40 things in there. And like he will hide it under his pillow and everything. Yeah. Like he had the exact pair of shoes. And he, he was coming home a month ago and his socks were black every day. And I'm like, are you taking your shoes off at school? And he's like, no, well, he had a hole in his shoes. So I'm like, oh, buddy. So I had bought him the two exact pair of same shoes at Costco, but the next size bigger because I knew this was going to happen. And so I'm like, oh, here, we can get rid of those ones. Here's your brand new pair of shoes, the exact same. Mm-hmm. On the weekend, I found those shoes underneath his bunk bed. Like he dug them out of the garbage. <laughs> it's just, that's yeah. how he is. So yeah. And, and I'm just going to tell you, Amy, like you're not alone. We deal with so many clients and it's not just their kids. Like it's them. It's grown adults who are dealing with that. And they're like, I cannot let go of this thing. It still has use. It still has value. And it means something to me because for example, these shoes have been with me through nine, my nine months of my life. And I remember I did this and I went here Mm -hmm. and I played with so-and-so and I jumped off that really high, you know, thing, that wall. And I played, you know, all kinds of games in these shoes, all of these memories and emotions as crazy and silly as it sounds are tied to that, um, to that item. When Mm -hmm. somebody touches something, it invokes emotion. It brings up memories like our brains, our subconscious are storing those things. And we consciously do not and cannot be aware of that. Right. So It is so important to recognize that people who are on the spectrum are so special and they're actually tapping into more of their brain than (laughs) like it, it, they have access to those memories, to those emotions, to those things that most people don't, don't, they, they easily detach from that to be able to move forward in life and to be able to retain more. So your child is utilizing more of his brain than the average child, and that's causing him to have more attachment to those items. And so, I mean, it is so helpful to have diagnosis and for the child to know that about themselves and for us adults to know that about ourselves. So it makes sense. So we, so we can say, oh, that's why I do this because awareness is the first and most important part. And that's why in this process, doing that assessment of your space and taking pictures and looking at things to assess it and see what's the issue here. And it might not be a problem for somebody. I mean, if it doesn't cause stress and anxiety for you and you can perfectly happily work with it, I mean, then is it a problem? But if it's affecting the other people in your home and it's Mm -hmm. an issue for them, and then that's affecting your relationship, is that a problem for you? So this is all where decluttering and organizing is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. why it opens up all these questions. And it's so good to come to these sorts of classes yeah. because it does get that discussion going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah it's this is why. Mm-hmm. Thank you. But you're doing a great job. Thank I mean, just that. even that, you know, just even trying to like understand like how can I help them with this and what can we do differently? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's the you know the first steps. And yeah, yeah, just I find communication is key. Um, when I work with kids, it's pretty incredible how not being their mother makes it a lot easier. <laughs> so yeah, honestly, like you the, when I come in and work with families and I don't have the history and the baggage and the emotions and the buttons, um, the process goes a lot differently. So 
just, yeah, be, you gotta be real patient or just, yeah, get that, get that. Or just hire you. (laughs) Yeah. Or, you know, (laughs) wonderful. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Really great questions. Mm -hmm. Cause it, it, it can be tough. You know, the adults are, are, who is harder? Is it's, I'm guessing it's the adults are actually harder to work with than, than the kids, but maybe not. Yeah. So kids under seven are actually pretty easy because they're still in that, like, um, sort of that malleable state they're learning. Right. Um, and then once you start aging from, from like eight and up, you've learned your habits, your behaviors, your programming, you're pretty ingrained. Um, and so then you're just reinforcing those habits and behaviors and, and building evidence and just continuing on with that. So the older that you get, <laughs> the more challenging it is to change. And I mean, when we deal with seniors who've lived in their home for 50 years and we're going through all of their things um, and they want to s- try to sell everything, even if it's all only going to get them five bucks, like th- this is you know, all of that past history and there's a lot to it. Right. So, um, kids are so much fun to work with. <laughs> it's quite easy. I love, I love working with teenagers, honestly. Um, cause they've got sass and they've got independence and they know what they want. And they just love that. Um, I'm there to be like, okay, what are we going to do? How do we want to design this? And like, I'm just straight up with them and it's just chill and there's no emotions. I can be a lot more patient with someone else's kids than I can be with my own kids. So, Um, but yeah, once, once you hit that, you know, 30 year mark, like you're, you're pretty ingrained in your habits and changes gets harder every year. And that, that makes sense. Um, now I want to on everybody's time, we have five minutes left and we can stay longer. If there's uh, more questions that you want to ask Krista, one thing that I want you to share with us is what happens with the after like they leave and that's just they're so thrilled and then it kind of hits them you know a day or two after and that little bit of a panic like oh my god there's so much stuff gone now (laughs) how how do they how can they whether we do it whether you do it for us or we do it for ourselves how do we deal with that I don't know if my clients don't tell me this but like I follow up with all of our clients one week after, like I'm following up with them three days, one week, two weeks, a month. And then every three months, I've never had a client say to me, where's that thing? Oh, I think I got rid of this. What? And like, oh, I'm freaking out. I've in five years, you know, I've never had somebody be like, I think I threw out something I wasn't supposed to throw out. Like we had it happen after one session. <laughs> And the mom was like, I got rid of Paw Patrol. Can you get Paw Patrol back? And I was like, well, it's a donation center. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's different because she donated the kid's toy. I'm like, that's a different thing. But I've never had a client say to me like, oh, I should have kept that. I regret that. I think it's really important that that's why you follow the steps in a, in a very like process orientated way, because then you can slow yourself down. It's not emotional. And you can ask yourself the questions to be like, I want to make intentional decisions, right? And so the workbook has all of the questions, like it's honestly the the most amazing tool, but it has all of those questions that you can go through to make sure you are making a decision that you feel confident about and you're not going to regret. If it's a maybe, I do say, let's put it over here, leave it aside, put it in the maybe pile and move on to other things. And when we're done with everything else, we can go back to the maybe pile and 90% of the time they built up that declutter muscle and it feels so good. And they're like, oh yeah, I don't actually need that. And they'll even reassess things that they've kept stuff. And they're like, actually, I don't think I need that. Can you take this too? Oh, maybe this isn't the, the one I want to keep, you know? So it is definitely something that you realize how good it feels. Um, and you just want more of the good feels. Um, but yeah, I've never had a client have have regrets I, about their I own can really see and I kind of had a little aha moment there when you said that the things they keep they even are looking at a second time and because you are going to haul this stuff you're going to deal with that errand and that how many other steps of the letting go and drop it off then it's so easy to be very honest and just go you know what if you're if you're going to take a load anyways I really honestly there's like this this and this can you just toss that in there too and that is phenomenal Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's pretty incredible when you remove all the other steps in the process and you just have to decide keep or go. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions before we go? I want to thank everybody for being here. Yeah, that was great. And you can catch the replay. It'll be coming up on the podcast pretty soon. Um, I'm, I haven't scheduled it out yet, but we will get that out there. You can watch it again. Listen, if you're listening for the first time on the podcast, be sure and hop over to the YouTube channel so you can see the slides and see the steps that she's talking about. And be sure and check for the link. It's in our chat tonight, but it'll be in the show notes. Um, you can either book a consult with Krista or one of her team, grab that book that she has for a tool for you. And, you know, just try it, try tackling it on your own. But you know that if if it's too much, you've got a whole team that can come in and help you out. So amazing. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. I hope you found that conversation insightful, encouraging, and also a reminder to all of us that what we see isn't always as it appears. People are going through a lot of things in their lives, and we would want that compassion shared to us and that is something that we can offer to others without judgment. Instead, be curious and, and reach out, reach in, figure out a way that you can make someone's day a little better. And it might just start with a smile. I thank you very much for spending your time with me here today and I encourage you to please subscribe to the fo podcast, follow us on social media, check out our events. We have lots of ways that we can help you or someone that you love. Share this with a friend. If there's someone that you know could benefit from this and hey, keep smiling that beautiful smile because the world really does need your sunshine. It means a lot that you spend this time with us and meet our experts and professionals who can help you through whatever life changes you're facing. Please refer to our terms of service available on our website, lifechangesmag.com. The link is in the show notes. Our disclaimer, Divorce Magazine Canada, Life Changes Magazine and Channel, and Divorce Resource Groups are intended to educate and provide quality, credible resource information. The contents should not be used as factual until consultation with the appropriate professionals for any guidance. Divorce Magazine Canada, Life Changes Magazine, and Life Changes Channel, as well as the Divorce Resource Groups, do not constitute endorsements for nor liability for any claims made in the presenting of this information.